Okay, this place is amazing. Blackfire Outpost might be a little bit rugged, but there's a special feeling about the place. The streets are nothing like back home. No clean roads and no blocks either. Everything's a sprawl. That lodge is where I'm staying. It hugs the edge of the outpost, across from some strange workshop. The first thing I did after checking in was get myself a fresh set of clothes, compliments of the lodge. But back to Batu. There's a parking bay with landspeeders nearby. They look so cool. I even saw a little gong droid hiding in the shadows. What a cute little power generator. I know my parents would appreciate it. I know I'm kind of everywhere right now, and this log might not make a whole lot of sense. But the point is, I'm excited. This is the first time I ventured away from home by myself. Now, this also means I know no one, and I don't have a lot of credits to get around either. It's a bit of a problem I didn't really think about. Should I befriend one of the aliens, or find my way all on my own? Let me think about it. Hello everyone, this is Fantasy Esque, and welcome back to Star Wars Merit's Path, where we are exploring our journey to Batu Pak in The Sims 4. Now, as you guys saw, Merith has been acquainting herself with Black Spire Outpost quite nicely, I think. She's very excited, as am I. And she's just noticed over here while thinking, maybe I should make some friends, maybe I shouldn't, I should find my own way around this place. She's noticed a land speeder that's kind of off into the jungle. And this has started sparking a few more questions about... Oh, why is that there, I wonder? What else is beyond the walls of Black Spire Outpost? Although, she has some pressing matters, like the fact that she doesn't have a whole heap of credits, and she doesn't really know anyone in this place, and I think if she wants a more fulfilling experience, well, the whole point of traveling is to talk and to do things, right? So, without further ado, let's jump into the episode, and is that... Is that an alien toad? Oh, I'm so excited, let me have a look, let me have a look. What are you, creature? What are you, you pixelated thing? I love it. I noticed some vultures as well. Uh, somewhere up here. Hold on a second. We have some alien vultures going on. Do we have... Ah, up here. Hold on a second. We need to check this out, guys. I'm gonna check out some alien vultures. Let's... Let me... Let me just... Right over here. Right... Oh, where did it go? There we... I think... Is this the one? There we go! Down there! Look at this. We've got some alien vulture going on. I don't even know if that's a word. It looks quite roughened up, but you go do. You do your thing. You do your thing up here while we do our thing down here. Anyways, are those alien plants as well? Oh, look! Decorative alien plants. So cute. So cute. And, oh. Oh, hello. Hello. You look very pretty. You look very pretty. Don't mind me while I get distracted by the plants and greenery. Okay. Okay, okay. We need to focus a little bit more. We need to focus. So, one of the things, guys, that I found out is that we already had an outfit that I did for Merith, but obviously, when she came to Batu, that switched. And I was a bit confused, and I thought, oh, maybe it's a vacation outfit. Now, I went and gave her a proper attire, I guess you could say. Um, something that I would be more approving of, in terms of color scheme and whatnot, over here at the lodge. So I was saying this is a complimentary sort of thing that she gets, because this is where she's going to be staying. Now, one of the cool things I noticed is that when you go in, all your outfits are pretty much wiped clean, and you have the one but two outfit, and then you have others, just like normal casts that you can do, although your sim is limited to choosing full body outfits or tops and bottoms that are from the Journey to Batu Pack, which means that we won't have random sims running around in Batu with a pink skirt, for example, or some neon kind of top. We won't have that, anything out of place, because 
inside Batu. I don't know how they've done it, but inside Batu, you can only have your Sims, like the the randoms that are generated. They can only wear outfits or clothes from the Journey to Batu pack, which I think is so cool because it adds to the atmosphere, adds to the fact that we don't have just random outfits happening. I mean. It would be so weird if we had a Jedi in a tight red dress, right? Very, very weird. But anyways, oh geez, this is not what I wanted to do. I am super excited. I'm pressing random buttons all over the place. But I've gone ahead and already planned my Batu outfit at the dwelling. Uh, we've got Savvy's workshop. Do you say Savvy? I don't know. But then again, this is Star Wars, so I feel like half the pronunciation of things just depend. Uh, on where you're from and where different people or aliens are from because it's Star Wars, right? It's Star Wars. Anyways, so we need to do some of these missions and they're going to help us get some credits and they're going to help us kind of get going in this area. Now, let's see. We need to freshen up at the dwelling. So let's have a look at what this says exactly. So we already know this, but I'll read it out for you guys. The dwelling can be found across from Savvy's workshop in Black Spire Outpost. Click on the highlighted building and freshen up to solve your Sims hygiene and bladder needs. Oh, okay, okay. So basically, you come here, you get these options. You can sleep, plan outfit, or freshen up. Now sleep, obviously we know that gets energy up, but I guess hygiene and bladder is from freshen up. Social, from people we meet, fun, I'm unsure right now. Hunger, obviously there's a lot of places we can buy food from. So let's go and freshen up. Now another thing I noticed is that I was going around trying to figure out some things, clicking on these gonk droids, you can scan them, the land speeders you can scan, and also I don't know if this counts as a new skill, but we can practice slicing. We can practice slicing, guys! How exciting is that? So, that's gonna be very intriguing. But let's have a look. Okay, we have freshened up at the dwelling, and now we need to order some food at Docking Bay 7. Now, this, all of this, is kind of just us going ahead and trying to figure this place out. Merith is trying to figure this place out, but her needs are great right now. She doesn't really need any of these, but. It's kind of good to get our bearings so that we know where to go when these things do affect us at some point. But okay, order food from Docking Bay 7. Docking Bay 7 can be found near the Millennium Falcon in Black Spire Outpost. Right? Okay, let's see. It's somewhere, it's one of these buildings. We've got like a few eating options. So this is Ronto Roasters. Oh, one other thing. Hold on a second. Headline effects on. No, I want it to be on. Is it on? No, jeez. Head... I'm so sorry. Headline effects on. There we go. I need to see my Sims Plum Bob, and also I need to see people's names and stuff. Um, Ronto Roasters, no. Here we go. Docking Bay 7. Okay, ooh. I did not notice there were all these, like, really cool sitting places. Seatings outside. Look at that. That's so cool. That's so cool. I didn't notice that because I was preoccupied with all the buildings. And look, we've got just these cute corners. Oh, it's a stormtrooper. Hello, hello. Oh my goodness, I didn't notice the stormtroopers before. I'm excited. I didn't notice. But essentially, when you go into the wardrobe, and when you click on um, plan sim outfit at the dwelling, you go to cast, except um, for all your full outfits, tops and bottoms, you only have Journey to Batu outfits you can do, including all the uniforms. Some of which are locked unless you get the quests done. But that's pretty cool. So you'll see all these randoms generating with these kind of things, but you won't really see uh, any other random outfits. Now, another thing I didn't check, my suspicion is that the aliens are actually costumes, but I haven't gone in and checked to see whether or not that's true. So I don't know. Should we check that out? But I don't know if we'll be able to. I am unsure. I am unsure. I'm very curious, but I am unsure. Hmm. Hmm. Why don't we... Since she's here, why don't we check something out, guys? We're going to use a few cheats over here because I want to figure something. I want to figure this out. So let's do testing cheats true. And then cast full edit mode. Now, obviously, I don't want to go ahead... 
Plan B2 outfit, and I don't think we'll be able to change her. I'm not entirely sure. Let's jump in and see. If it comes out in one of the outfit categories, then we know it's uh, a costume. If it doesn't, then most likely it's not a costume, and it is... Also, I'm pretty sure The Sims are going to introduce a whole lot of different skin tones. Like, we're going to get some new skin tones. And that might actually be useful for the aliens. But, okay, let's, let's have a look. Um... So it's not in the hats, not in the hairs, or in the accessories, the makeup, nope, it might be a, a face thing, skin details, I don't see anything here, do we have any like alien stuff, nope, these are all scars, so I'm actually confused. I thought we must have had some alien stuff going on here, but I guess not. So then, do they count as a different species? Because when I was making my aliens, I did not get the different species. Because then what if your sim romances an alien? Then what happens to their baby? I'm so confused. Maybe it's a costume, just like I thought it was. But here guys, do you see what I mean? Look, when you go to style looks, I don't even have an option. It says feminine, so nothing's cancelled out, I think. Or maybe it is. Nope, see? Nothing's cancelled out over here, but you can't click on any outfit. You only get the options for Journey to Batu. So anyways, I had to tell you guys that. I just had to tell you that. In case you guys wanted to know, but... I find that personally very, very exciting. Now, I don't think they've done this in other worlds. I don't think so. But now that they have done it, if some modders kind of took this, this piece of the game somehow, this function, and made it so that we could apply it to other worlds, or we could specify what kind of outfits uh, sims within, like randomly generated sims wear, I would be so, so happy. I would totally use that mod. But anyways, let's go get some food. Just for the sake of getting food. So where do we need to go? We need to go to Docking Bay 7. Let's order some food. Now, are these rabbit hole places? That's probably the only thing that would concern me. That if these are rabbit hole places. I think they might be rabbit hole places. Hmm. Which wouldn't be too fun. It wouldn't be. Um. We can shop here. Maybe that's one of the complaints people had. Because look. I absolutely love the way this particular neighborhood looks, but I feel as though, apart from Ogre's Cantina, which is right over here, I think, we can actually go into Ogre's Cantina, um, but I think all these other locations over here, at least, they're all rabbit holes. So it makes sense, right? Why you would be a bit frustrated, especially if you can't visit the, lo the locations in this place. Hmm. And then we don't even have... We don't even have any lots that you could kind of stay on. Unless the other districts do. There's like two other districts. We'll have to see, but... Oh well. I mean, you win some and you lose some. You win some and you lose some. Is she... Is she going... Yep, it's a rabbit hole. That Ooh! Ooh! Okay! Hello! Hello! I'm excited. Okay, I will say I am disappointed because I've been pretty excited and I feel as though that is quite positive, especially compared to a lot of people's reaction to this pack. I know a few of us out there really, like love the idea and I, I do and I have been very excited about a few things. One of the things I'm not so excited about is that a whole bunch of these buildings in this district and I hope that the other districts aren't just a replica of this. A whole bunch of these buildings are rabbit holes, which kind of sucks. But, I do approve of the fact that the screen which comes up for us to order from is very different looking to just the typical um, typical street food stand order that we get. Like the pop-up that we get. So I, I approve of that. I like it. Let's have a look at this. Strono Cookie Tugs, a master of galactic cuisine, Strono Cookie Tugs runs a food freighter business that is renowned across the galaxy. He's currently hard at work serving his unique dishes in Docking Bay 7 in Black Spire Outpost. And I'm also very appreciative of the fact that we actually have alien food. Love it. Okay. 
Ooh, Outpost Popcorn Mix. That makes me excited. You know why? Because I had some Outpost Popcorn Mix with my dad when we were at Galaxy's Edge. So it brings back memories. It would be cool if they had... Oh, geez. Maybe one of the other places has blue milk because we drank that as well. So that would actually be pretty fun and pretty cool. But anyways, let's get some popcorn. I want to get some popcorn. But now I'm also curious about some of these other things we've got over there. Oh, and she just jumped down just like that. Well, okay. Um, ooh, we have some scrap piles. Okay. Well, why don't you come sit down here and eat your popcorn? We don't want to just stand out there, do we? No. No. Okay, we're getting notifications about our parents, which is great, but our parents are away doing their own thing while we are trying to live our lives over here. Popcorn. I kind of want some. I want some popcorn. Hmm. But not any popcorn. I want that popcorn. That was kind of like a, like a sweet, spicy, slightly sort of popcorn. It was very nice. But, okay. I'm so excited. I'm excited. Obviously, there's some things I'm disappointed about, but I am excited. I am excited. Okay. We'll see how long this excitement lasts. But you know what? With my determination to make a story out of this, I think we'll do pretty fine. I think we'll do pretty fine. But I'm, I have questions now. Ooh, hello, hello. Look at this. Look at this, we've got some offices and whatnot. I am very curious about the the aliens. I like how, how are you, what is going on with you? I wanna know. Are you a costume? What are you? Cause I haven't been a, or it would be, I would be very sad if we couldn't create these aliens. I, I think we can, we should be able to, cause that would just be weird. Um, but I'm, I'm confused. I thought they were costumes, but they might not be. But then I didn't see anything in Cass. So I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused. I'm a bit confused. Oh well. Let's not freak out too much. I'm sure the answers will come to us. And you are littering. Can you not do anything with that? Let's throw this away. Let's throw this away. Let's throw this away. Come on, let's go. Okay, we're gonna throw that. And we need to ask, we need to start asking people about things. I think Merit's getting interested. She's starting to notice. Because when she initially came, things were pretty quiet. And we just had a bunch of aliens walking around. But I think she's going to start getting curious at the fact that there's a whole lot of... Uh, ooh, hello, Ogus Cantina. Hello, look at this, guys. Now this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Look at that. I love the fact that we can just walk in without a loading screen. I love that. Look at this. So we've got a cantina going on over here. Oh my goodness. I haven't been to the cantinas back in Fieka where the colony that Merit's from. So I am very excited. Ooh, look at this. I don't know why, but as soon as she walked in, I felt like a cold breeze went over me. Almost as though I was walking into an air-conditioned cantina. And it's hot where I am right now. I'm in Australia. It's flippin' hot. Not that hot, but still pretty hot. Especially in my room. Just, air's not good here. Anyways, I don't have aircon on, but I just felt as though I got a whoosh as soon as she walked in. Ah, maybe it was my mind. The imagination. It's going wild. It's going wild. Okay, I'm so curious about this. I'd love for her to get a drink, but maybe not yet. Okay. Well, she's just walking behind the, the countess here. Don't mind us. Don't mind us. Oh, it's this. Okay, we could dance. Oh, this is so fun. Oh, this is so fun. We could uh, listen to this R3X radio. DJ R3X. Oh, we could go ahead and do some stuff. You know what? She, uh, yeah, like I was saying, she's going to go do some dancing. But like I was saying, she's noticed all of these stormtroopers and imperial officers. And she's probably curious about the first order on this planet and maybe some of the other types of presence here because the place where she's from it's almost like it's a very quiet rural place they get some smuggling activity but they don't have a very strong presence of anything there's no you know huge resistance or first order sort of thing going on over there and all the information people get are from travelers 
So in a planet that's got a lot of that, I think she probably wants to figure out what's going on. So we're gonna get her to maybe chat to this DJ? Or actually, why don't you chat to the bartender? But I feel as though maybe she should chat to the DJ. Okay, she's gonna ask this DJ about scoundrels, I think. She's gonna ask- This is very awkward, because <laughs> you have music going on and- But then again, I feel like she might be a little bit awkward, you know, because this is the first time out and doing all of this on her own, but... I can just imagine her yelling over the music. This very, very... I, I don't know if it's personal, but slightly intrusive question. This is gonna make you stand out as an outsider. No, she's gonna yell out. To this droid, to this DJ. Oh my goodness. Asking about scoundrels. Let's see what this DJ tells her. Is he gonna tell her anything? Or is he gonna be busy just doing his own thing? If there are credits to be made, smugglers and scoundrels will always be there. As a matter of fact, you should talk to that guy over there. His name's Hondo Onaka, and he may bring you in on his legitimate business ventures if you ask nicely. Oh! We're talking to a, a, Z a Zabrak now? Are we? I think it's a Zabrak. Okay, well, Merith decided to just go out. Did she get freaked out by that? I don't know, but now she's talking to this flirty Zabrak female. Uh, Shosmi. That's such, that's such a difficult name to pronounce. Shosmi. Where is Shosmi? I don't know. Is, okay, no, I thought it was a stormtrooper. Where are you going? This is so weird, but I'm, I'm letting her do it just because I, I kind of like seeing what she's going to do and where she's going to go, but she was in the bar, I mean, in the can she was in the cantina, and then she was trying to figure out some things, and then the droid told her, she wanted to learn about the scoundrels and the smugglers, and then the droid told her to go speak to Onaka, Hondo, and then she just bolted out of there to talk to this Zabrak, who's feeling very flirty. Maris? What just- I'm gonna assume, because th what other reason does she have to run all the way across the outpost to come to Shosmi? I'm gonna assume that droid probably said, you should talk to Shosmi and see what else she can tell you. I think that's what happened. That droid sent her to Shosmi and said, oh, well, there's this other person on the outpost in that corner of the outpost. They probably have more information about whatever it is you're curious on. Yes. I'm confused. Because look, she's right next to one of these supply crates. So, I, I don't know, Shasmi. Are you doing some fishy business? Are you doing fishy business? Well, I'm, I'm very excited to find out. But guys, I think with that said and done, I'm going to leave off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>